The Great Gildersleeve. A special rebroadcast for all you soldiers, sailors, and Marines of the United Nations. Listen to another amazing episode in the life of the Great Gildersleeve. bedroom, Leroy the scholar, eager for knowledge, sits at his desk poring over a problem in mathematics. Clang, 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 went the trolley, ding, 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 went the bell, on Clang's 18th night, he, oh, is it? <laughs> Leroy, concentrate, my boy. Ah, the great Gildersleeve himself, down in the living room, sitting on an uncomfortable little stool and holding a skein of yarn for his niece, Marjorie. Lord, hold your hands up a little. Really, you're the worst fidgeter I ever saw. I don't see why you make me sit on a stool. Because you're so big. I can't whine if you're way above me. Yes, yes. Well, it's bad for the stool, my dear. The stool wasn't built for it. You mean you weren't built for it. <laughs> no, my dear. But keep your hands up. It'll slip off. Confound it, Marjorie. My arms are tired. It won't take a minute. Bad for you to sit in one position all the time. Bad for your blood. It, uh, settles down. <laughs> In the corners. Get sluggish. Can lead to rheumatism. It'll only be a minute. Marjorie, my nose is itching. It'll stop. Uh, I can't stand it. Oh, don't. Keep your hands apart. Well, then you scratch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Phone. Phone, phone. I'll take it. It's coming with me. You stay where you are. Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Yes, just a minute. For you, Uncle Mort, it's Judge Hooker. Oh, don't put the wool down. Well, how am I? Gee, I'm trapped. <laughs> just walk over here with it. I'll hold the phone up to your ear. Uh, 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 the things I go through. Hold it closer, Marjorie. Hello, Judge. Oh, sure, I'd be glad to see you. But I'm going to see you in half an hour anyway, down at the Jolly Boys Club. Oh, private? Well, certainly, come ahead, Judge. Goodbye. What do you suppose the old goat's got on his mind? And look out, it's pale with a phone call. Oh, this darn thing. No, I'll fix it. Funny. Judge said he had to see me alone. Something private. So hurry up and finish winding this wool, will you, my dear? If the judge catches me doing this, I'll never hear the end of it. Good evening, Judge. Come in. Good evening, Bertie. How they treat me? Oh, pretty good. I can't complain. If they don't treat you right here, just you let me know. I need a good cook over at my house and... Oh, good evening, Doc Morton. I didn't see you. <laughs> After your old tricks, I see, Judge. <laughs> evening, Marjorie. Hello, Judge. Preparing to do a little living, I see. Hello there, Leroy. Leroy, I thought I told you to go upstairs and finish your homework. I did. You've done all of it? Yep. Every bit of it? Yep. Scouts on her? Yep. I guess the boy's done his homework. Come on in the living room, Judge. Well, did you do your spelling? Didn't have any. Ha, ha, ha. Boy, she was my favorite. Yeah, I found that out long ago. Oh, for the break, kid. Uh. <laughs> Very well, Leroy. In that case, you can play and enjoy yourself for another five minutes and then Betty bye. It's bedtime, my boy. How do you like that? I work and slave all evening till I get a nervous breakdown practice me, and that's the reward I get. So, Leroy, on the break. <laughs> you come with me, Leroy. <laughs> I'll give you something for your nervous breakdown. Any more of those Yeah. Well, Judge, what's on your mind? We're due down at the Jolly Boys Club in 20 minutes. Gildy, if you don't mind, could we go into your study? Your yes, study? Certainly, if it's as private as all that. You'll excuse us, Marjorie. Yes. Uh, shoot, Judge. Gildy, we've been friends for a long time, now, haven't we? Off and on, yes. We've been through a lot together. Yes, we have. Well? What's eating you, Horace? Doggone it, if I tell you, you'll laugh. Well, not unless it's a laughing matter. 
Gildy, I believe I can say without fear of contradiction that this is one of the most serious matters in my life. I don't know what to do about it. It's got me all this way and that. I sit down to read a brief and my mind wanders. If you're worried about losing your mind, Judge, I wouldn't give it a thought. You've got very little to lose. <laughs> Confound it, Gildy. Will you be serious? Huh? I'm trying to tell you something. This has nothing to do with my mind. It's more an affair of the heart. Oh? Well, why don't you go see a doctor, Judge? Why don't... Judge? You don't mean... Uh-huh. I'm afraid that Cupid has entered my life, Gildy. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You know, I'm sorry, Judge. You caught me unawares. Yeah. Wait a minute. Who's the woman? Why do you want to know? If you've been poaching on no, my... No, there's no one you know. <laughs> oh. Well, who is she? Well, I prefer that you remain anonymous, behind you. Yeah, suspicious old goat. I it to say that she is uh, not unattractive. She is, in fact, very talented. To put it bluntly, Gildy... She's got me talking to myself. <laughs> Does she reciprocate your affection, Horace? That I have no way of knowing. There's a way you can darn soon find out. What's that? Ask her. Oh, I couldn't do that. She doesn't even know that I... Uh, well, uh... Judge, don't tell me you've been worshipping her from afar. Well, hang it, Gildy. I don't know how to handle these things the way you do. That's why I came over here to see you. <laughs> well, you've been wasting your time, Horace. Move right in. That's the only way to work it. Now, hold on. This young lady is not like most of the ones you've had dealings with. What? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, she's, uh, in a word, she's Spanish. Spanish, huh? Well, Spanish descent. And you know how carefully Spanish girls are brought up. Chaperones until they're 40 and all that. <laughs> How old is this girl? I'd say her age was uncertain. Has she got a chaperone? No. Okay. <laughs> How did you happen to meet her? Well, it started with Tangleless. Oh, so that's where you've been all these evenings. Now, don't misunderstand, Gildy. It was nothing but business. At the start. Yeah. She's in the tangle business? Well, she's open to dancing school. Oh. I thought maybe the best way to break the ice might be to write her a letter. A love letter. Well, it's not very original. I thought of sending some flowers with a letter. Well, that might take the curse off it. If you don't mind, Gildy, I, I've made a draft of such a letter, and I... Could I read it to you? Oh, by all means. I think it's kind of cute. See how you like it. <clears throat> to whom it may concern. <laughs> by these presents, be it known that whereas the undersigned has long admired the party of the first part, Miss Dolores Del Rey, and whereas... No, no, Judge. No good? No good. Well, I intended it in a humorous vein, Gildy. Well, it doesn't come through, Judge. And anyway, it's the wrong approach. It is, huh? Definitely. This woman is Spanish. You have to remember that. What do you know about Spanish? I merely studied it for a whole year, that's all, in high school. <laughs> Pablo said Espanol. Si, senor, you hablo Espanol. Donde está mi sombrero? Spanish. <laughs> Gildy! Gildy, would you help me with this letter, would you? Tomorrow, Judge. We've got to get down to the club now. Well, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to make the Jolly Boys tonight, Gildy. What do you mean? You're on the way? No, no. You see, I, uh, I have other plans for this evening. Oh, slush. Sorry I can't invite you to come with me. Judge, you couldn't drag me there with a subpoena. No good. Though Gildersleeve gets here. Can't play with only three. Well, where is Mr. Gildersleeve, anyway? He'll be here. Hooker's the man that's really run out on the Jolly Boys. You know what? I think Hooker's got a dame on his mind. At his age, you're dreaming, Floyd. It's Hooker that's dreaming. Let me tell you. He came in the barber shop four days ago and bought a haircut, shave, massage, and oil shampoo. That's $2.40. And then he remarked it was too bad I didn't have a manicure girl. Ooh. Hmm, he says. Listen, Peavy, Judge Hooker never spent more than 60 cents in a barber shop in his life. 240 at his age is love. Well, uh, <laughs> you may be right at that. I know I'm right. There's just one thing I wonder about. What's that? 
Where would the judge find an object for his affection? Hmm, there's something in there. These days? Well, the judge could do all right just picking up Gildersleeve's gift card. <laughs> and I was a young man. Oh. Before my feet was gray. Are there any jolly boys up there? Gildersleeve, hurry up. Oh, the kids and sailor men, I gave my heart away. <laughs> now, Commissioner, none of those broken down bad tone solos. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, jolly boys. Chief. Hi, TV. Commissioner. Hi, Hi Gildersleeve. Yeah. What's cooking, if any? If not, why not? We were just talking about our absent brother, Judge Hooker. I got a theory he's stuck on a dame. <laughs> what makes you think that, Floyd? Spent $2.40 in the shop one day last week. Tipped me ten cents, too. I forgot that. <laughs> Not only that, Mr. Gildersleeve, he was in my store only yesterday. And I noticed he was behaving in rather peculiar manner. Oh, how do you mean, Peavy? Well, he seemed nervous. He ordered a lemon phosphate, then just sat there and toyed with it. Poked it with his straw and so on. Never did drink it. Yeah. Well, what's peculiar about that? Well, the judge likes to get his money worth. Anyhow, he just sat there looking out the window, wouldn't talk, wouldn't drink his phosphate. Forget the phosphate. It was probably no good. There was nothing the matter with the phosphate. I tasted it later. <laughs> Never mind, Peavy. Get to the point. Oh. Well, he sat there mooning, and all of a sudden the town clock struck five, and he jumped up and dashed into the phone booth. Well? When a man his age makes calls from a booth, Mushy business. <laughs> well, I still say all you guys are just making a fairy story. Judge is 60, and everybody knows it. Sure, everybody knows it. But does the judge know it? What do you think, Commissioner? Gentlemen, I don't think. I know. I'm in a position to inform you that Cupid's Dark has struck our friend, Judge Hooker, right over his left hand vest pocket. <laughs> don't laugh, boys. Remember, this girl may be somebody's grandmother. Yes. <laughs> How do you know this for sure, Commissioner? Oh, the judge told me. Uh, did he mention the name of the fair one? Well, the lady is named Dolores Del Rey. He claims she's a Spanish beauty. Dolores Del Rey? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. That's the woman that's opening up the new dancing academy there on State Street, next to Beckman's drugstore. Well, she was in the station last week to get her license. Oh? Uh, did you see her? Did I? Oh, you're darn certain I did. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> my desk sergeant saw her, too. I thought he was going to jump right out of his uniform. No kidding. Oh, she's a real knockout. Yeah. Well, well, apparently the judge has got something. <laughs> you know, fellas, I promised to help him write a love letter. But the judge has always been such a good friend of mine. Maybe I ought to go a little further for him. <laughs> what do you mean, Mr. Gildersleeve? I'm willing to call on the lady in person. That's all, brother. <laughs> I resent your insinuation, Floyd. Do you think a member of the Jolly Boys Club would steal a girl of another member? Not if he was looking. You... <laughs> Floyd, we're all gentlemen here. Uh, oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. Yeah, well... <laughs> See that you remember it. Shall we play, gentlemen? Yeah, come on, let's get down to business. There is a cavern in the town, in the town. <laughs> open there, my true love. Come on, let's play. Now drink to the town and drink to the
back to the great Gildersleeve. He'd promised, you remember, to compose for his old friend Judge Hooker a love letter calculated to arouse, yet not alarm, a Spanish lady of tender breeding. After sleeping on the idea, however, he's come up with a better one. So let's join him in his study where he's discussing it with the judge. I'll tell you why I didn't judge. I might write you the best love letter in the world. But after all, what's a letter? A cold thing at best. What you need is a more personal touch. But Gildy is... My own best work has not been done by male judge, believe me. But I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know what to say. When I'm alone, I can think of all kinds of beautiful thoughts. But I'm when I'm with her, I'm tongue-tied. Well, then let me handle it for you. How? Well, arrange to have me meet her. No, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Horace, you trust me, don't you? I don't know. Well... Of course, if you don't trust me, I can't do anything for you. Now, don't get sore. This was your idea, you know. Heaven knows I have no interest in the woman. Any woman, for that matter. Oh. I... <laughs> I was saying to Floyd only last night. Funny about women. I can take them or let them alone. Well? Gildy, I don't want you to think I don't trust you, but if Look, you... Horace. You remember when you were in school? You remember the courtship of Miles Standish? He wanted to propose to a girl, but he didn't know how. So we got John Alden to do it for him? This is like that. Hmm. How did Miles Standish come out on that? <laughs> it, all right, we'll forget Miles Standish. What is it? Nothing but a poem by Longfellow. What does Longfellow know? He probably ran if he even saw a girl. Did you ever read Cyrano? I think so. Now, there's a poem by a Frenchman, Judge. You can't fool those Frenchmen. Longfellow. Do you remember Cyrano? He was so ugly, no woman would look at him. So he wrote love letters for his friend who was young and handsome and attractive. Now, that's more like it. If you promise to handle it like that, not double-cross me. Judge, did Damon double-cross Pythias? No, but I'll bet Pythias kept an eye on him. <laughs> I give up. I was willing to help you out, but this is too much. No, I'm sorry, Gildy. I'm sorry, old man. I'm sorry. Sorry. I won't say another word. Now, how can we arrange it? Well... I think the thing to do is to arrange to have me meet her. You know, just casually, and give me a little time alone with her so that I can... Why alone? Judge! Oh, I'm sorry, but I I don't see why I can't come along. Because! How can I tell her what a great fellow you are? How brilliant, how attractive, with you sitting right there belying my every word? <laughs> well, I don't care for the way you put it, but perhaps you have a point. All right, when are you going to see her again? Tonight. Good. Call her up and tell her you're going to bring a friend. And you arranged to arrive a little late, see? Give me time to break the ice. How much time do you need? Half an hour. I don't stall around. <laughs> the date's for 8 o'clock. I'll plan to arrive at 8.30. Uh, wait a minute. One more thing. What's her address? Oh, I hope I don't regret this. It's 178 Homedale Avenue, apartment 2B. Uh, what'd you say her name is? Uh, Dolores? Dolores Del Rey. Oh, shall I call her Senorita, or does she understand English? I'd prefer that you call her Miss Del Rey. That's what I call her. No wonder you're not getting any place with her. <laughs> well, leave it to me, Judge. Leave it to me. And I'll see you tonight. I shall be there at 8.30. Brew in watch time. <laughs> Dark up here. <laughs> Looks like a nice place, though. Apartment 2B. Oh, here. Lada. Hmm, very pretty. Yada dee dee. La dee da yada. Oh. Dee. Oh. <laughs> uh, good evening. Senorita Del Rey, I presume? Yes, I am Miss Del Rey. Uh, my name's Gildersleeve. Judge Hooker said he was going to phone. Ah, Mr. Gildersleeve, yes. Come in. Uh, the, uh... Judge was unavoidably detained. He'll be a little late. Oh? Oh, but it's too bad. Still, maybe we can spend a little time getting acquainted, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you bet. Oh, excuse me. May I have your call? Oh, excuse me. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Uh, you're welcome. I mean, thank you. <laughs> this is a very handsome seat. Now, a nice chair for you? Chair? Oh, anything at all. <laughs> Uh, you mind if I smoke a cigar, senorita? Oh, but I love cigars. Sometimes I think I would like to smoke cigars myself, only it might look funny. You think so? <laughs> you look cute smoking a cigar. <laughs> Have one. They're two for a quarter. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Thank you very much. 
I was only joking. Joking? <laughs> well, so was I. I'll smoke later. So you are the judge's great friend, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, yeah, me. I like you. <laughs> uh, the feeling is mutual, senorita. Uh, the judge thinks quite a lot of you, you know. He does? What does he say about me? He said you were beautiful. He told me you had beautiful black hair and eyes and, uh, uh... I hope you are not disappointed. Oh, brother. <laughs> uh, the judge is a fine fellow, isn't he? Oh, he's very sweet. Huh? I think he is very sweet. Well, he probably shows you his sweet side. He's a very good lawyer. Now, tell me something about yourself for a change. Are you a lawyer? Oh, no, I'm a water commissioner. Uh, in the water business? I work for the city. Uh, I see that everybody gets water. In the houses, factories, and so on. Oh, you are a big man. Well, I guess it's a pretty important job. Oh, you are too modest. Where would the people be if you did not send them water? I don't know. I never thought of that. <laughs> Always now, when I turn on the faucet, I will think of Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, I'd like to see you again sometime, Miss Del Rey. Uh, you know, to talk about the judge. Oh, I would like very much to see you. Would we have to talk about the judge exclusively? Well, not all the time. <laughs> we could go to the movies. Or there's quite a few things we could do. Don't you dance, senor? You look like a good dancer. You rumba a little? Rumba? Uh, I'm not much on the fancy stuff. Ah, you would be a fine rumba dancer. You have just the figure for it. Uh. <laughs> you know, I think you have some Spanish in you. Uh, Spanish? What makes you think that? Your complexion, your eyes. Maybe your temperament a little, too. Well, what do you know about my temperament? I can guess. You are a man with fire. <laughs> I'll bet you're no frigid air yourself. <laughs> Senor, I am serious. You have Latin ancestors, perhaps? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Way back there, some Spanish don or something. Don't they sell me sombrero? Your hat? What's your hurry, senor? Oh, no, no, no. I was just, <laughs> uh, just trying out my Spanish. Oh, oh, I'll be very good. It's a shame you don't dance, senor. You have no feeling for rhythm? Oh, sure I have. I even sing a little. Ah, then you could dance, too. Let me hear you sing. Well, I'm no professional. Come on, I play for you. Well, Miss Del Rey, whatever you say. Oh, it's for it, too. Que hombre. Huh? That means what a man. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. <laughs> you know, you're not exactly the man the judge described to me. What do you mean? I had expected you to be older. As old as the judge? Oh, uh, maybe not quite. But I thought you would be fatter. Fatter? Why that? Oh, but you are quite slender. I keep myself in pretty good shape. Feel my muscles. Here. Feel that. <gasps> oh, I would be afraid of you. Oh, I wouldn't hurt you. <laughs> Will you sing now? If you really want me to sing, how about Besa Mi Mucho? Oh, that is a beautiful song. Uh, Come, I'll play for you. <laughs> My key? Me, 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 me. I guess so. <laughs> Bésame, Bésame mucho. Each time I cling to your kiss, I hear music divine. Bésame mucho. Hold me, my darling. And say that you'll always be mine. Oh, you have a thrilling voice, Senor. Yeah, thank you. Bésame. Bésame mucho. You know what that means, Senor? Bésame mucho? Yeah. <laughs> Do I? By George, if it weren't for the judge. Oh, all right, the judge. Couldn't you just for one little moment? Oh, the door. Booker. <laughs> Don't get up. Let me go. It might be somebody looking for the wrong apartment. Very well, if you insist. Well, Gildy. Come back in an hour, Judge. This is going to take longer than I thought. <laughs>
is the Armed Forces Radio Service. Presents the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. The Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore, music by Claude Sweet. Gildersleeve in just a moment. And let's take that moment to think of a main dish the folks really go for. Fluffy light macaroni, golden and rich with cheddar cheese flavor. You think macaroni like that is a post-war treat you'll have to wait for? Well, here's the good word. Get the new Kraft dinner, and right now you'll make that rich macaroni and cheese main dish in just seven minutes cooking time. The new Kraft dinner macaroni with such wonderful cheese flavor, the folks will think you've really splurged on the ration points. But actually, you get two boxes of this macaroni and cheese for just one point. Each box of Kraft Dinner gives you enough fast-cooking macaroni, enough of the flavorful Kraft grated, for a main dish that serves four people. Now, there's a bargain in money, a bargain in ration points. And think of the time Kraft Dinner saves you, too. Tomorrow, when you're shopping, get a couple of packages of Kraft Dinner. Maybe you've tried this popular Kraft product before, but taste it now. Try the new Kraft Dinner. Well, let's see what the great Gildersleeve is up to. Last week, you remember, he volunteered to help Judge Hooker press his suit with the dancing teacher, Miss Dolores Del Rey. And when we left him, he was really putting his heart into it. Now, it seems, not content with helping the judge, he wants to help Miss Del Rey, proving that in Summerfield, at least, knighthood is still in flower. Judge, have a cigar. Don't care if I do. Gildy, I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking you again for your efforts in my behalf with Miss Del Rey, or Dolores, as I... Now, feel privileged to call her. Oh, it was a pleasure, Horace, a pleasure. Always happy to oblige. You found her more receptive, I trust, since I called on her. Yes, she's taken to calling me Horacito. (laughs) Horacito. Yes, Horacito. Uh, What does that mean, Gildy? Horacito? That's a term of endearment. I know. Means little jackass. (laughs) I trust you're jesting. Well, actually, it means little Horace. Same thing, though. Rock Morton, if you just got me over here to insult me, I'll... I'll keep your rompers on, Judge. After all, we both have the same thing at heart. What's that? To give Miss Del Rey a helping hand. Look, Yelde, I asked you to break the ice for me with this young lady. You did so. Thank you very much. Now I'll take over from there. Horace, is that any attitude? That little girl's got a hard row to hoe, Judge. And if we can help her with the hoey, well... It's not easy to come into a strange town and get a dancing school started, you know. I've been thinking about that, Gildy. If we could arrange somehow for her to meet a select group of the more prominent people in Summerfield... Well, that's easy. We'll throw a reception. I don't think this reception should be thrown exactly, Gildy. It must be kept high tone. Well, of course. The important thing is to see that it's uh, socially me plus ultra. Me plus ultra. Because if she can get the society people, the others will follow. Judge, I'll only be too happy to give such a reception right here. What's the matter with my house? Everything. In the first place, you haven't got a cook. Well, that's so. But I get half the credit, remember? Naturally, and half of the bills, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, who we invite? Mrs. Pettibone, of course. Oh, sure. And Eve Goodwin. She's artistic and all that. Let's each make up a list. 
You invite some, and I'll invite the others. I know. Leela Ransom. She has all those high-toned southern relatives. Well, Leela might take a little handling. Oh, nonsense. Leela loves parties. Yeah, but a party given for another woman? <laughs> no, Judge. This is going to take finesse. You better leave Leela to me. <laughs> Why, George, and this is good cake, Leela. I'm certainly glad I dropped in to see you. Just on a can of the cake, Rothmore? Oh, you yeah. are. How can you say that? What's cake to me? <laughs> oh. I don't know. Sometimes I wish you'd look at me like you look at a chocolate cake. <laughs> I'd rather look at you anytime. Mm. Did you have any special reason you wanted to see me? Oh, no. No reason. I just wanted to. Um... Leela, did you ever think of trying to improve your dancing? Well, that's a strange question for you to ask anyone, Throckmorton. Well, I didn't mean it that way, Leela. I've always been considered very light on my feet. Oh, certainly. Light as a feather. I just wondered if you'd, uh, uh, let it go. Let it go. Uh, why don't you eat that other piece of cake, Leela? Why don't you? Uh, well, I wouldn't want to see it go to waste. Yeah, mm. I'm mighty good. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it. Uh, by the way, Leela, Judge Hooker and I are giving a party this Saturday. A party? How exciting. You and Horace? Yeah. Will you come, Leela? Well, of course I'll come. Uh, how do you and Horace happen to be giving it together? Well, a guest of honor is a friend of his. Well, then why doesn't Horace give it? Uh, this person is sort of a friend of mine, too. Who's the guest of honor, Throckmorton? Uh, Miss Dolores Del Rey. I don't believe I know Miss Del Rey. Well, no, she's new here. Uh, she's a lady that's opening the dancing school there on State Street next to the... Uh, I think you'd like her, Leela. Mm -hmm. Is uh, she the person you expect to improve my dancing? Well, uh, I was only joking about that. She'll probably improve mine, though. <laughs> I'm sorry, Throckmorton. I'm afraid I can't come after all. Leela, you've got to come. Everybody will be there. Who fenced you? Well, as a matter of fact, you're the first one I've asked. Except the Pettibones. Are they coming? Uh, no, they have an engagement. So have I. But you said you'd come. It happens that I loathe business parties, Throckmorton. This isn't business, Leela. This is strictly personal. Oh. Oh, please. Um... <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know what I mean. I think I know, Throckmorton, and I must beg to be excused. Oh, confound it, Leela. The only trouble with you is you're a snob. I told you I haven't engaged Well, I don't believe it any more than I believe the petty bones. Well, Eve Goodwin is no snob. She's a teacher herself. She'll know how it is. Well, hello, Throckmorton. Come in. Oh, thanks, Eve. I can't stay but a minute. But... Oh, you're a lucky man. I just baked the cake. Uh, you did? <laughs> well, that's fine, Eve, but I'm not very <laughs> hungry. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Eve, you're interested in education, aren't you? Well, as a school teacher, I have what you might call an academic interest in it. Great. Now, Eve... If you knew of a worthy educational institution that was trying to get started, you'd support it, wouldn't you? I suppose so. All right. Will you come to a party in honor of the lady that's starting the new dancing school next to Beckman's Drugstore? <laughs> well, really. From the build-up, I thought you were going to ask me to be president of a college. Uh, this is serious, Eve. This young lady, her name is Dolores Del Rey, she's trying to start this worthy enterprise, and Judge Hooker and I want to help her meet the right people. I see. Huh? Oh. Uh, you'll come, won't you, Eve? I mean, with your interest in education and all that. I'm afraid I'm not interested in education in quite the same way you and Judge Hooker are. Oh, what do you mean? Well, I passed Miss Del Rey's establishment yesterday. It has a sign in the window that says, um, Men be popular. Learn the tango and rumba from a real senorita. And her picture... No, Eve, she has to make a living. <laughs> You'll come, won't you? I'm sorry, Throckmorton. I have an engagement. What's the matter with this town anyway? Well, oh, I don't understand some women. I don't understand any women. Just because the girl's been on the stage, just because she's good-looking. Well, the TVs may not be society exactly... 
but at least they're home folks. Wonder if they've gone to bed. Still, there's a light. Hello, Peavy. Mr. Gildersleeve, well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Come here. Well, just for a minute, I will. I hope you weren't on your way to bed. No. As a matter of fact, Mrs. Peavy retired a few minutes ago, but... I usually sit up for the final word from Lynn Graham Swain. Uh, uh, take your coat off? No, thanks. I can't stay. Just dropped in to tender you an invitation. You and Mrs. Peavy. Oh, no, that's very nice. I'm sure that Mrs. Peavy and I would be only too happy to... Uh... Saturday night, 9 o'clock, Peavy. Oh. The judge and I are giving a reception for a friend of ours, Miss Del Rey. Miss Del Rey. Oh, isn't that the young lady you were telling us about at the poker party the other night? Well, it's the same girl, but I found upon closer acquaintance that I had misjudged her, Peavy. Floyd Munson tells me she's a dancer. Don't pay any attention to anything Floyd tells you. Uh, she does dance, however. That is, she teaches dancing. You think she'll do her dance Saturday night? <laughs> I don't know what kind of dancing you're thinking of, Peavy, but I assure you, she's very high class. The uh, tango and so on. All very artistic. Now, speaking of artistic dances, I recall the time I took Mrs. Peavy to the World's Fair in Chicago. <laughs> this is nothing like the World's Fair. The old girl never got over it. <laughs> she claims to this day that I took her in there on purpose. I did, too. Well, uh, very amusing, Peavy. Uh, we can count on you then for tomorrow night? Well, uh, speaking for myself, Mr. Gillespie, I wouldn't miss it, but perhaps I'd just better run upstairs and check with Mrs. Peavy first. Come in and sit down. I won't be there a minute. Well, I see you have a canary. Yeah, it's a new one. The other one passed on. I guess you heard it was very sad. Oh, too bad. Uh, perhaps it was all for the best. This one's named Dickie Bird. Mrs. Peavy named him after me. He looks a little like you, too, Peavy. <laughs> You're always joshing, Mr. Gillespie. Cute little rascal, isn't he? Yeah, does he sing? Oh, sings beautifully. So they tell me he hasn't sung a note since we got him. <laughs> Mrs. Peavy thinks his diet is wrong. Oh, diet. Hello there, Dickie. This is Mr. Gildersleeve, Dickie. Are you going to sing for him? Yeah, come on, Dickie. Let's hear you sing. Sweet, sweet. You see, wrong diet. Yeah. <laughs> well, you entertain Mr. Gildersleeve, Dickie, while I run upstairs and speak to Mrs. Peavy. It won't take a minute. I make it a point never to accept an invitation without checking with her first. It, it, it saves arguments later. Yeah. <laughs> Tell her it's formal, Peavy. Hi there, Dickie. <laughs> Let's hear you sing. Come on. Tweet, 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 tweet. Won't sing, huh? And I don't know why I should sing. Listen, you heard me sing. All right, don't sing. Come on, Dickie, sing for your old Uncle Mort. Come on, Dickie, hop on my finger. Come on. Ow! Bite me, will you? I'll break every bone in a little yellow body. Making friends, Mr. Gildersleeve? Friends? This darn bird of yours just bit me. Bit you? Yeah, bit me. No, I know he's diet strong. What he needs is me. <laughs> That's a dangerous bird, Peavy. You shouldn't have him around. Well, I've never known him to attack anyone before. Uh, can I get you some iodine? No, I'll just suck it. Well, got to be going, Peavy. Million things to do. I'll be seeing you in the missus Saturday night then at nine. Oh, oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, about that, I... Uh... Yeah? Yeah? I'm afraid perhaps you'd better not count on us for Saturday night. No, why not? Well, it seems that we, uh, I mean, uh, well, you see, the, the fact is, it seems we have an unexpected engagement. All right, Peavy, don't come if you don't want to. But I'd just like to say this. Of all the liars I've ever met, you're the poorest. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Uh... <laughs> Good night. Shucks, I... I don't like doing that to Mr. Gildersleeve. I, I don't feel right about it. I don't like telling fibs anyway. Richard! All right, woman, all right. Oh. Good gracious to Betsy. Sometimes I... Uh... Oh, shut up. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. But first, don't you homemakers feel pretty proud of yourselves when you discover new economies in feeding your families? 
Well, lots of you, no doubt, have already discovered the economy of using parquet margarine, Kraft's delicious, nourishing spread for bread. Serving your family parquet margarine is the kind of economy you have a right to be proud about. You see, parquet isn't just an ordinary margarine. Its delicate, wholesome-tasting flavor will tell you that. Parquet margarine, you know, is made by Kraft, and it's made to the same high standards of quality and flavor as all of Kraft's fine foods. Besides, parquet margarine is wonderfully nourishing. It's one of the best energy foods you can serve. And every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A in winter as well as in the summer. Yes, using delicious, nutritious parquet margarine is a mighty wise economy these days. So if you aren't already using parquet margarine, get acquainted with this grand product tomorrow. Just ask your food dealer for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Now, let's get back to our friend, the great Gildersleeve. It's Saturday morning, and although it's early, Gildersleeve has already been busy for some time in preparation for tonight's party. We find him now checking over the invitation list with Judge Hooker. Well, how many people did you get, Judge? How many did you get? I asked you first. Well, the list itself didn't turn out too favorably. Apparently, there are a number of social events. Any of your people are coming. None of them. None of them? You're a fine one to give a party with Hooker. Well, doggone it, how many of your list are coming? None, but mine all had good reasons. So did mine. Yeah. Besides, I went ahead and invited someone else. So did I. Well, you hear who I got. Just the most important woman in this town, that's all. Oh, who is she? A woman that can make or break this dancing school with her little finger. Come on, who? Mrs. Harlow Vandevoort. Oh? She's president of the Summerfield Choral Society, the Summerfield Friends of Chamber Music, and, well, just about everything artistic in town. You're the naval aide, too. You don't have to tell me. And she's rich as a fool, Gildy. If she okays this dancing school, believe me, it's okay. Well, that part sounds good. Now, who'd you get, Gildy? Uh, Floyd Munson and his wife. What? Floyd Munson, the barber? Well, what's the matter with being a barber? Barbering is an honorable profession. The profession has nothing to do with it. I won't have Floyd Munson at this party. Why not? Floyd's a good fellow. Yes, and I dare say his wife is all right, too. But the object of this party was to present Miss Del Rey to the cream of Summerfield Society. And the Munsons are not the cream. Well, doggone it, Horace. We had to get somebody. Well, I don't suppose you can tell Floyd not to come now. Could you ask him, please, to watch his step? Well, don't worry about him. Now about Miss Del Rey. If she'd like me to call for That's her... That's all been arranged. I'm taking care of that personally. Uh, you're pretty slick, aren't you? I'm learning. <laughs> well, I got to be running along now, old man. See you this evening. Uh, well, adios, Horacito. Uh, buenos dias, amigo. Oh, where'd you learn that? <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, get away from them olives. That's for the guests. But I'm starving, Bertie. You can't be starving, my boy. You've just had dinner. Uh oh, I got a customer. Is the cap on steak, Miss Gill, please? Yeah, it looks fine, Bertie. Well, it won't stay. It's going to fall into punch before the evening's over, and I know it. Now, scoot upstairs, my boy. The guests are arriving. Good evening, Bertie. Good evening, Judge. Evening, ma'am. Don't forget to wipe your feet, Judge. Oh, couldn't I just stay and meet her? Well, just for a minute, then. But stay out of the punch. Ah, good evening, senorita. Welcome to our humble abode. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. I kiss the stars in your honor. Hey, kid. <laughs> Hi, Judge. Hi. Take the ladies' wraps, will you? Oh, everything looks so lovely. Uh, and this little man? Oh, uh, this is my nephew, Leroy. Hi. So this is Leroy. The name is Leroy. Oh, I think he is cute. <laughs> Say good evening, Miss Del Rey. Good evening, Miss Del Rey. Oh, and how well he obeys, like a little man. Yes, well, I'm sorry my niece can't be down this evening. She has a sore throat. Oh, good evening, Leroy. Dolores, may I escort you to the punch bowl? Oh, I'm very fond of punch. And on to the punch bowl. We may as well dive in before the others get here. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> Gee, Uncle, she's not bad. Well, your old uncle knows what he's doing. <laughs> hey, Uncle, do you think they're real? Think what are real? The eyelashes. That's a silly question. <laughs> Naturally, they're real. You know, that, that's some dress she's wearing. Oh, yes, she has excellent taste. There's one thing I'd like to know. What holds it up? It, that does it. <laughs> Go to bed. Go on. Oh, 
Put them sandwiches there, Judge, and help the lady. Got to eat them up. I'm coming. She's been with us a long time. <laughs> Good evening, ma'am. Come right here. Oh, must be Mrs. Vandervoort. Excuse me, Dolores. Yeah, me too, Dolores. Mrs. Vandervoort, old Dutch family, very important. I'll be right back. Don't go away. Oh, it's you, Judge. Good evening. Good evening, my dear lady. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mrs. Vandervoort? You have? Allow me to do the honors. Mrs. Vandervoort, may I present my distinguished friend, Frank Morton Gilderson. How do you do? I had my chauffeur park in your driveway there. Oh, not in the slightest. Love to have him there. <laughs> <laughs> Beastly weather, isn't it? Oh, just the usual summer field weather, I'm afraid. Uh, take the lady's wrap, Judge. Yes, sir. Uh, so good of you to come to our little soiree, Mrs. Vandervoort. Well, uh, life in Summerfield is so dreary at best. I feel anything that can be done to raise the cultural level is worth the effort. Oh, how right you are. <laughs> uh, I'd give a lot for a little culture right now. Hey, come. I'd like you to meet our guest of honor, Senorita Del Rey. Oh. I understand she's an exponent of the dance. Oh, yes, very talented, very artistic. What type of dancing does she specialize in? Oh, she does them all. You're rhythmic? Uh, no, she's Spanish, Spanish descent. <laughs> Senorita Del Rey, meet Mrs. Vandervoort. She had the chauffeur park her limousine in the driveway. Oh, I'm most happy, madame. Mr. Gildersleeve tells me you dance. Oh, <laughs> a little. Oh, uh, she's just being modest. Her dancing will knock your eye out. Oh, now, please. Uh, she plays the piano, too, like a million dollars. And sings. Oh, how nice. Perhaps you'll play for us later. Mr. Gildersleeve failed to mention that he sings, too, and beautifully. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Well, well, perhaps you'll both sing Mr. for... Mr. have a sandwich. Oh, uh, not just now, thank you. Oh, go on. I've made a whole mess of them. <laughs> well, just one. No, I shouldn't. Oh, go on, Miss Vanderbilt. Grab a fistful. Ain't gonna be no good tomorrow. <laughs> There's the doorbell again. I'm coming. <laughs> Been with us a long time. <laughs> Bertie's a jewel. <laughs> Mr. Holmes? Yes, sir. Come right in. This is the place. <laughs> it's, it's the Monison. Yes. Tell Floyd to watch his step. Uh, you ladies excuse me, please. The judge will see you're supplied with punch. Well, hi, Commissioner. Uh, good evening, Floyd. Like to have you meet the ball and chain. We'll see shake hands with the Commissioner. <laughs> well, well, it's about time I met you. After all, I heard about you from stupid here. <laughs> Ruthie's a great kidder yeah. Quite a night out, isn't it? <laughs> great night for duck <laughs> <laughs> If you'd like to hang your coat up in the closet there Oh, just chuck it down anywhere I'm getting her a new one for Christmas So I hear <laughs> Well, I'll hang it up just in case I know better than to count on Big Mouth here <laughs> Great kidder <laughs> Say, uh, Floyd, uh, uh -huh. we've got a guest here tonight, Mrs. Vandervoort. Very high class. Uh, watch it a little, will you? You don't have to worry about me, Commissioner. I wasn't brung up in no barn. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I know, Floyd, but uh, just mention it to your wife, too, will you? Well, you don't have to worry about her, either. She'll be okay. I'll admit she tends to get a little excited in crowds. But if she gets out of line, I'll handle her. Uh, good, good. Well, it was nice of you to ask us to your shindig, Mr. Gildersleeve. You know, I was saying to Floyd, I ain't had this dress out in four years. <laughs> hey, where's all the people? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I suspect they're in the dining room around the punch bowl. Oh, punch bowl, lead me to That's it. That's for me. Yeah, uh, this way, folks. Push in your shirt, one handsome. You're bulging again. Don't think he's popping out. For two cents, I'd take it off. <laughs> Mrs. Vanderbilt, I'd like to present Mr. Munson. Mrs. Vanderbilt had the chauffeur park her limousine in the driveway. Yeah, I noticed it out there. Quite a bus you got there, Mrs. Vanderlip. What kind of mileage you get on it? Bet it eats up the gas, huh? Well, I really couldn't say. Well, I'll drive an old myself. It's no Cadillac, but then it's transportation, you know what I mean? Hey, don't I get to meet the lady? Oh, oh <laughs> pardon me. Mrs. Vanderbilt, Mrs. Munson. How do you do? <laughs> well, pleased to meet up with you. <laughs> say... <laughs> Say, uh, who's the little armful over there? Oh, uh, oh, Miss Del Rey. Uh, uh, Dolores? Yes? I'd like to have you meet my friends, Mr. and Mrs. Munson. Any friend of Mr. Gildersleeve is a friend of mine. Say, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> by the way, the commissioner has been telling me quite a lot about you. Oh, yes? Tell me what he says about me. Right here in public? <laughs> Want me to get arrested? Uh, now, if you and me was to have a little private conversation, I might be able All to... All right, Junior, keep your shirt on. <laughs> uh, shall we go into the parlor? Oh, uh, Mr. 
Brunson. Mr. Gildersleeve didn't tell me. What line of work are you in? Me? Well, I got a little... Oh, shall we go into the parlor? <laughs> I'm weary of the sea wind. I'm weary of the foam and the little stars of Duna call me home. The little stars of Duna. Miss Delroy giving us something Spanish, you know what I mean? Oh, yes, do. Uh, well, well, of course. Huh? Mr. Gildersleeve, will you sing with me? Oh, sure. <laughs> Each time I cling to your kiss, I hear music. Oh, brother. <laughs> Hold me, my darling, and say that you'll always be mine. <laughs> Boy, ain't she something? Well, you don't something have to sit there giving her the eye. Who's giving her the eye? I gotta show my appreciation, don't I? I gotta at least be polite. You don't have to fall all over yourself about it. Who's falling all over myself? No, you big log. I've been watching you. You've been after her all evening. Well, I like that. I never raised a finger. I leave it to anybody here if I've been in any ways out of line this evening. Now, Floyd, please. I leave it to the lady herself. Floyd. This isn't the first time, Floyd Munson. Mrs. Munson, really, you mustn't. I've taken all I'm gonna from him, the big baboon. I'm gone home. All right, go on. If there's anything I hate, it's loudmouth game. Oh, no, folks. Let it go. I got the car keys. <laughs> I think it's high time we all went home. But, Mrs. Vanderbilt, it's only the shank of the evening. You're not going to let a little family understanding. I'm afraid the misunderstanding was mine, Mr. Gildersleeve, from the beginning. My wrap, please. Oh, gosh. Well, if you won't change your mind, I'm, I'm sorry this had to happen, Mrs. Vanderbilt. So am I. Uh, be careful backing Mrs. Vanderbilt out of the driveway. Don't scratch it. Good night, Mrs. B. Gee. <laughs> Well, let him go. At least now we can relax and have some fun. Well, it's been a charming evening, Throckmorton. Uh, judge, Dolores, uh, you're not going. Oh, the judge has kindly offered to see me home. Uh, Horace, you can't do this to me. You can't go now. We're in this together. I'm sorry, Gildy, but we have Miss Delray's career to think of. What do you suppose I've been thinking of? Well, if you use your head a little, like... Why? Wait a minute. What are we going to do? we got all this food here. <sighs> well, that's the thanks you get... Pass a little remark, and right away everybody gets sore. Yeah. Are you still here? Get out. Go on, get out of here. Now, Commissioner. Get out of here, Floyd. Okay. I can take a hint. Well. <laughs> not your fault, Floyd, but by George, this is the last time I ever try to help anybody. Positively. <laughs> I'm going to bed. You better do the same, folks. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Music on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Parquet Margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> During the Thanksgiving season, we all think of good things to eat. So lend a cheerful ear to this grand array of treats you can make with Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food. Press two halves of a pear together with a tasty center filling of Pabstet, and there you have a grand salad. As for turkey or chicken leftovers, just listen to this mealtime magic. Stir up a smooth, luscious Pabstet sauce, and then drench tender leftover chunks of white or dark meat with delectable cheddar cheese flavor. Why, a main dish treat as tempting as all that will hardly taste like leftovers at all. Remember, Pabstet is the cheese food of a hundred uses. 
So keep a package of Pabstet handy for sandwiches, snacks, and all sorts of appetizing treats. Tomorrow, buy delicious, nourishing Pabstet. Don't forget, ask for Pabstet. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Kraft presents the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Parquet Margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore, music by Claude Sweden. Greg Gildersleeve in just a moment, which is my moment to tell you about a mighty big meal getting help. It's the Lickin' Good Macaroni and Cheese you cook in just seven minutes with a box of Kraft Dinner. The new Kraft Dinner that gives you light and fluffy macaroni with a really rich cheddar cheese flavor through and through. Now, maybe you know how Kraft Dinner's macaroni cooks in just seven minutes flat. Maybe you know how the Kraft grated that also comes in the Kraft Dinner box lets you sprinkle cheese flavor all through that macaroni fast. But let me tell you, if you haven't tasted Kraft Dinner lately, you're in for a surprise. Now, Kraft has found a way to give you the Kraft grated with a fuller, more satisfying cheddar cheese flavor that combines perfectly with the fluffy, tender macaroni. You're bound to get compliments on the macaroni and cheese you cook the seven-minute way with Kraft Dinner. Try it tomorrow. Now, let's join our old friend Gildersleeve. Several days have passed since his attempt to introduce Judge Hooker's lady friend, Dolores Del Rey, to Summerfield Society, a party which ended somewhat unpleasantly for both guests and hosts. Three days later, Gildersleeve is still trying to patch up the damage. Right now, for instance, we find him stepping into the barber shop to square things with Floyd Munson. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, hello there. Hello, Floyd. Nice day, isn't it? Nothing extra? No, I guess you're right. Uh, thought I might just have a haircut. Haircut? What for? Cut your hair last week, day before the big blowout. The blowout? Uh, it was more of a washout. I wouldn't argue with you. I'm sorry about the whole thing, Floyd. Uh, if I said anything that night that seemed unfriendly, I want to apologize. It wasn't anything unfriendly, Commissioner. You just threw me out of your house. Well, I apologize. That's okay. No, it's not. How could I have done such a thing? Throw a guest out of my house. On a cold night, too. You don't know the half of it. When I got to my house, the wife wouldn't let me in. No? Where'd you sleep, Floyd? Busted in the cellar door and slept on the sofa in the living room. That generally softens her up, but not this time. When she come down in the morning, she was still wound up like a cuckoo clock. Da, 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 da. <laughs> She never given that party. We never should have went. It's always the same thing. Every time she thinks I got my eye on some dame. But I ask you, Mr. Gildersleeve, did I get out of line in any way, shape, manner, or form? Not that I noticed. There's only one way I can figure it. She reads my mind. <laughs> oh. Say, uh, you know that Miss Del Rey is quite a dish, if you don't mind my saying so. Miss Del Rey is nothing to me, Floyd. No? I was simply trying to help the lady get her dancing school started. And she walks right out of my party and goes off with Hooker. Yeah, that's gratitude. Yeah, well, she can have the old goat. Although what she sees in him, I can't imagine. Maybe the judge is more of a man than we've been figuring. I'm not interested in that question either, Floyd. Okay. Yeah, you didn't really want a haircut, did you, Commissioner? No, that was just a... I can wait. A towel, massage? No, thank you. Ought to be getting home, Floyd. My niece has been a little under the weather lately. Must remember to stop at the drugstore on the way. Better be going. I just wanted to square things up a little, Floyd. Consider them square, Mr. Gildersleeve. These things happen, that's all. Stop in any time. Yeah, thanks. I will, Floyd. And if you should run into the senorita, 
Give her a hot tamale for me. Oh, that's all over. Well, hello, Mr. Jellerstein. What can I do for you this afternoon? I want a thermometer, please, Petey. A thermometer? You want a clinical thermometer or one for the weather? I wanted to take somebody's temperature with. Yeah, that's good. I haven't got the other kind. You uh, running a fever, Mr. Gillespie? No, Mr. Peavy. My niece Marjorie has had a little something. Streptococcus. The doctor won't let her get up till her temperature's normal. A yeah, wise precaution. A wise precaution. Yeah, I suppose so. Now, here's just the ticket, I'd say. A dollar and seventy-five. Dollar seventy-five for a thermometer? Confound it, Peavy. The kids break them all the time. They're not worth it. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> this is a precision instrument, tested by seven different people at the factory. Yeah, well, I'll bet none of them tried dropping it or sticking it in a baked potato. <laughs> Leroy did that with the last one. Well, of course, they're only... Yeah, never people. mind, Peavy. Just wrap it up. I'll take it. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I wanted to tell you how sorry I am we couldn't come to your party Saturday night. Well, you didn't miss a thing, Peavy. You were mighty lucky. And, uh, couldn't you hear? Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Peavy and I went to a lecture on trees. Trees? How fast they grow, how old they get to be, what the bark is for, and so on. I couldn't seem to get my mind on it. Well, I wish I'd been there. That's funny. All the time I was looking at those lantern slides, I kept wishing I was at your party. I've got an idea. This Miss Dolores Del Rey must be quite a pippin. Oh, for heaven's sake, Pete. Oh, no offense, Mr. Gildersleeve. The lady is nothing whatever to me. Absolutely nothing. Well, that was my understanding, that it was Judge Hooker who had the prior claim. Hooker had no claim at all. Well, I thought he found her. What if he did? She's a woman, not a pocketbook. Yeah. And what's more, this whole question is a matter of great indifference to me. Put the thermometer on my bill, Peavy. I've got to go. Yes, sir. Mm. He's running more of a fever than he thinks. Leroy, is that you? Yeah. You awake, Marge? How do you feel? Oh, much better, thanks. I feel fine. Uh, Marge, I brought you something. You did? What? My Red Rider pistol. You can sleep with it tonight if you like, under your pillow. Why, oh, Leroy, that's very sweet of you. You're sure you won't be needing it? No, I've got my hunting knife. I'll sleep with that. Well, that's very generous. Hey, you can keep it even. Go on, keep it. It's yours. Oh, I couldn't do that, Leroy. That'd leave you unarmed. Well, I'll lend it to you then, till you get well. I'll put it here on the table. You can reach it if you need it. Unless you'd like to hold it a while. I'll enjoy just having it there where I can look at it. Gosh, I'm sure glad you're feeling better, Marge. Oh, I am much better. You know, I got to thinking. I holler a lot, but gosh, if anything was to happen to you, I don't know who I'd fight with. (laughs) You don't need to worry about me. It was pretty bad, huh? What you had? Streptococcus? Yeah. Oh, it's just a sore throat, really. Is that all? Give me back my pistol. (laughs) I'm only kidding, Marge. We missed you these last few days, Unc and me. It's not the same, just two people eating together. Unc gets awful quiet. You wouldn't know him. Just sits there stoking it in. (laughs) He's been kind of gruesome lately anyway. You know, I have a feeling he has something on his mind. You and me both. What do you suppose it could be? Well, it isn't business. What do you mean? You remember when he fell for Mrs. Ransom, how he used to go mooning around the house? Yes. You remember when he got all excited about Miss Goodwin there, couldn't even eat? Yes. Well, here we go again. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, you missed the party. You didn't get a look at that senorita. Boy, she's quiet. I think I heard him come in. Gosh, can you imagine what it would be like if he married her? Nothing but Spanish omelets, Spanish rice, Spanish onions. Hush, <laughs> Do you suppose if we talk to him about it man to man and ask him to watch his step? Oh, that's the worst thing you could do. For heaven's sake, don't mention it. If we even... Well, what are you two rascals whispering about? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Hello, Uncle Mort. How's my little princess this evening? Oh, much better. There's nothing the matter with me now. I feel fine. Well, we'll see about that. I hope you're right. I'll enter my red...
Red Ryder pistol. Wasn't that nice of me? Oh, that's fine, my boy. Been having a little Indian trouble around here lately? <laughs> Did you get a thermometer, Uncle Morris? Yeah, got it right here. I know I haven't any temperature. Well, we'll just see. Shake it down first, Uncle, and hold on to it. Yeah, and you keep it out of the baked potatoes. <laughs> Remember, if it's still normal, I can get up for dinner. The doctor said so. We'll see, my dear. Open your mouth. Yeah. That's it. Under your tongue. Now keep your mouth closed. Have to wait a couple of minutes. Kind of a day did you have? Did you eat any lunch? Oh, hello. Uh, 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 uh. Mm. No talking. The mama won't work if you keep your mouth uh, open. <laughs> or is it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's it. How's your throat? Still sore? No, Phil, what's that? Keep it closed. <laughs> kind of a day did you have, Leroy? Did you distinguish yourself in your studies? And if not, why not? Uh, so you... Speaking of that, Unc... Yes? It, uh, it seems I got my report card today. Well, you did, eh? And what does that report card say, Leroy? Well, I don't want you to think I didn't try, Unc. I worked like anything all month. Honest. Leroy. <laughs> well, I guess some kids are just naturally smarter than others, Unc. You remember what I told you last month? Yes, sir. You remember what the punishment was to be if your marks didn't improve? She have a heart, Unc. An understanding is an understanding, Leroy, and we had an understanding. Yes, sir. Now, where is that report card? It's here. Hmm. Don't go away. Arithmetic, A. History, A. English, A. Geography, A. Science. Well, they're all A's. Those are the breaks, kid. <laughs> Why, Leroy, that's wonderful. I fooled you that time. By George, you did. Why, that's wonderful. Why, I never got an A in my life. Gee, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you don't see many kids get all A's on their report card. Had to work for that. You bet you did. And I just want to say, my boy, that's about the finest... Leroy, this isn't a forgery. Forgery? Oh! Uh, uh, I'm sorry, my boy. I apologize. Just comes a little suddenly, that's all. <laughs> Marjorie, what do you think of our little Leroy getting all A's? <laughs> oh, my goodness, I forgot all about the thermometer. Here, let me. What does it say? Wait till I look at it. How do you like me getting all A's, Marge? Great me. Why don't they make these darn things so you can read them? Oh, I hope it's normal. I hope it's normal. Oh, I had it there, and then I lost it. Well, turn it on so the light gets on it. <laughs> yeah, I've got it. Steady, steady. 99. No, no, it's not. It's normal. Hooray, I'm normal, I'm normal. <laughs> That's right, Marjorie's normal and Leroy is super That's yeah, not easy getting all A's, you know it You bet it's not, I'm very proud of you, my boy <laughs> I'll let Marge my pistol, too Oh, well Bye, George, with Marjorie herself again And Leroy practically Phi Beta Kappa We're going to have to celebrate this Huh? Oh, let's, let's have a celebration Tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to take you two kids to the downtown club tomorrow for lunch How do you like that? Do they have ice cream there? Any kind you want. Oh, that'll be fun. You've never taken us there, Uncle Mort. So we're going tomorrow, because for once in his life, your old uncle is paid up. <laughs> Gosh, the downtown club. Can Piggy come along? Oh, I think it'd be more fun if we just kept it in the family, don't you? Yeah, I think so. No stranger, just the family. Okay. Say, Unc. Hmm? Speaking of strangers in the family... Marge and I were talking just now. Yes? Oh, Leroy. Well, why not? Because. Well, we've got him in a good mood. What's this all about? <laughs> well, Marge doesn't think I should say anything, but we were kind of worrying. I mean, well, it's about this Miss Del Rey. What about her? Oh, Leroy. Well, what about her? Well, what about her? <laughs> I wouldn't worry about her, my boy. She's nothing but a friend. I'm not even sure she's that after the other evening. Let's let Judge Hooker worry about her, shall we? Gosh, Unc, you're not as dumb as you seem. <laughs> <laughs> Little Leroy. Answer the door, will you, Leroy? Leroy. Uh, guess he's gone to bed. Good evening, Throckmorton. Eve. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Do come in. I can't stay, Throckmorton, but Leroy told me Marjorie's been quite sick. Well, Leroy's and... been exaggerating as usual. She's all right. Oh, I'm so glad. I brought her some grape jelly Mother put up last summer. Well, now that's one thing your mother was good at. 
Really, Throckmorton? Uh, uh, all I mean is her jelly is magnificent. <laughs> Marjorie will be crazy about it. Uh, come in and sit down, Eve. Uh, take off your coat. Oh, I really mustn't. I want to get home in time to hear the symphony broadcast. Well, uh, listen to it here. I like good music, too, you know. Do you, Throckmorton? Uh, crazy about it. Here, I'll hang up your coat. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, sir. Now we can sit by the fire, talk, and listen to some nice classical music. Sofa? This chair is quite comfortable, really. Oh. <laughs> the fire's nice. Well, how was your party the other night? Party? Oh, uh, very pleasant. Too bad you couldn't come. Well, perhaps I can meet, um, Miss Del Rey, is it? Yeah, that's right. Perhaps I can meet her some other time. Uh, not so sure you'd like her, Eve. Why not? I saw her on the street the other day. She's quite beautiful. Oh, yes. But after all, what's beauty? A thing of the moment. It withers and fades. But you, Eve. Just how am I to take that, Throckmorton? <laughs> what did I say? Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, don't get me wrong, Eve. I think you're pretty, too. I think you're beautiful. Only, well, you're not such a physical type. More mental. Oh? I mean... When I'm with you, I don't think of silly things as if you were just a woman. What do you think I am, Frostmorton? Huh? <laughs> a woman is a woman. <laughs> Maybe I've been wrong about you, Eve. Maybe you have. You know, you're really very pretty. Thank you. I like your hair. Smells nice. <laughs> it's black. I like your eyes, too. Well? <sighs> when I'm with you, there's something about you that stirs me to the very depths. Do you mean that, Throckmorton? Do I? Shove over. <laughs> hey, Eve, where are you going? The symphony, Throckmorton. You've forgotten I'm the mental type. Oh! <laughs> Tchaikovsky, a fine way to spend an evening. The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. Meanwhile, let me pass on the good word about the new Kraft Dinner. This famous macaroni and cheese still cooks in seven minutes. But the new Kraft Dinner gives you a richer, fuller cheese flavor. Just what you cheese lovers have been hankering for. The flavor of golden cheddar through and through a dish full of tender, fluffy, light macaroni. And to think you cook it in just seven minutes. When the folks taste the new Kraft Dinner, they'll say it's incredible that you could whip up such swell macaroni and cheese so fast. Kraft's tireless research, of course, is responsible for the goodness of the two ingredients in each Kraft Dinner box. The special macaroni and the Kraft grater that gives such splendid cheese flavor. Let them work their speed magic in your kitchen to give you point-thrifty, good-eating main dishes. At your food store tomorrow, get a couple of packages of the new Kraft Dinner. Each box makes enough for four servings, and you get two boxes for one single red point. Now, let's get back to Summerfield, and in particular, the Downtown Businessmen's Club, where Gildersleeve is entertaining his niece and nephew at luncheon. Never has there been a merrier affair, or one where the ice cream flowed more freely. All through the meal, the great man has sat there cracking jokes and making puns, beaming upon his attractive niece, and urging Leroy to stuff himself in honor of his scholastic triumph. Oh, boy, get him! Oh, Mort, people are looking at you. What do I care? I'm a member here. I can look cross-eyed if I want to. Oh, you're awful. <laughs> hey, Aunt, here's Judge Hooker trying to smile with his new teeth. <laughs> oh. oh, Leroy. Leroy, there's such a thing as carrying a good thing too far, my boy. Now you calm down and finish your ice cream. The young lady's waiting to take your plate. Oh. Oh, okay, finish. You had enough? You got any more? <laughs> Leroy, you've had two orders. Well, I'm hungry. I worked hard this month. Yeah, bring the boy another ice cream. Not every month he gets all A's, is it, Leroy? I'll probably get A-plus next month. You'll probably get D-minus. 
Marjorie, another helping for you? Oh, no, I couldn't possibly. This is just perfect. It's been such fun, Uncle Mort. Bye, George. We must do this more often. Every Saturday. How about it, Uncle? Well, we'll see, my boy. It's been just like a family reunion. Sure. Marge, well again? And you speaking to me again? <laughs> uh, you mustn't pay any attention to me, my boy. If I get a little preoccupied at times. I mean well, but I have things on my mind sometimes. Business and, uh, uh, and so on. Uncle Mort, let's all stick together. Why, certainly, my dear. Of course we'll stick together. The three musketeers, that's us. Yeah, all for one and one for all. And no outsiders. Sure. Leroy is Atos, and you're Porthos, and... No, no, you're Porthos, Unc. You're the fat one. (laughs) Uncle Mort is not fat. He's just large. (laughs) Well, thank you, my dear. Well, here's your ice cream. Go ahead, Leroy. Hey, hey, look who just came in. Who? At that table over there. George Hooper. He has a lady with him. It's her. It's that Miss Del Rey. Eat your ice cream, Leroy. So that's Miss Del Rey. What did I tell you? Eat your ice cream. <laughs> well, the judge sees you, Uncle Morty. He's coming over. Yeah, what does he want, the old goat? Haven't spoken to him since that evening. If he Well, thinks... well, well. Having a little party, I see. Good day, Throckmorton. Good day. Marjorie. Leroy. Hello, Judge. Hi. Nice to see you about again, Marjorie. Thank you. Nice to see you, too, Throckmorton. Thank you. I, uh, I'm sorry you're otherwise engaged, Throckmorton, or I'd ask you to join Miss Delray and myself at the, our table. I've had my luncheon, thank you. You might like to know it was Miss Delray who suggested it. Miss Delray means nothing to me, Judge. Nothing whatever. And you mean less. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me for intruding. Pardon me for living. I hadn't noticed it. (laughs) What's the matter, Rock? What are you so upset about? Eat your confounded ice cream and let's get out of here. I got to get to the office. Seven from 14 is seven, and one to carry. Eight and one is nine, and 13 is... If there's anything I hate worse than adding, it's subtracting. <laughs> How Leroy ever got an A. <laughs> Don't sneak up on me like that, Bessie. You startled me. Yes, sir. A good secretary knocks before she enters. Oh, excuse me, I just wanted to ask you something, but you're busy. I'll come back. Well, you've interrupted me now. You might as well spill it. Yes, sir. Well, you see, there's a cousin of mine. I mean, he's a sort of cousin. We're not sure. He's a staff sergeant, and he's in town now on, on furlough. So, I mean, uh, well, could I take the rest of the afternoon off? Confound it, Bessie. I'll not have the routine of this office upset by staff sergeants. Yes, sir. And that's final. Yes, sir. Let me get back to my work. And by the way, I want you to get me the figures on the cash receipts for 1938, 39, and 40. Yes, sir. Seven from 14. Well, Bessie, what is it? Mr. Gildersleeve, weren't you ever young yourself once? Come here, Bessie. Yes, sir. I didn't mean to be unkind, but work is work, you know. Work is important. How old are you, Bessie? Nineteen. Nineteen. I suppose young men seem pretty important to you right now, don't they? Well, they're awfully scarce, good ones. (laughs) Yes, I suppose so. I suppose you think a lot about love and all that. Well, I'm human, Mr. Gildersleeve. I dare say. <laughs> you know, Bessie, when you get to be my age, you'll find that things change a lot. You'll discover that love is an illusion, really. It's one of those things that pass. I guess you must have had some bad luck, huh? Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> it's not just that. There comes a time when a man has to face the fact that he'll probably never marry. That he'll always be a bachelor. Always a little lonely. Then nothing matters to him but work. Work, work, work. Work is man's salvation. You'll discover that when you're my age, Bessie. Yes, sir. But right now I'm 19. (laughs) All right, Bessie, run along. Run along to your staff, Sergeant. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, thank you. Oh, oh, what was it you wanted me to get the uh, cash receipt? Yeah, for 38, 39, and 40. Uh, Never mind, I'll find it myself. Run along. (laughs) Shall I lock up, Mr. Gildersleeve? I'll do that, Bessie. Never mind. Bye. Goodbye. Have a good time. Yeah, have a good time. Don't mind me. 
<laughs> Work. Probably be here till all hours. Just a cold sandwich and a cup of coffee to keep me going. That's all I need. Two, three o'clock in the morning, still working. Maybe she'll pass by on her way home from some gay party and see my light still burning here, working. Oh, well, let's see. Where was I? I have to start over again here. Hmm. Seven and fourteen is seven. Seven from fourteen is seven. Each time I cling to your kiss, I hear music feel Oh, nuts, got to get to work. <laughs> work, work, work. Well, I can't go any further till I get those figures for the cash receipts. Where the devil could Bessie put them? That girl. Well, maybe they're in her file. Oh, it's getting cold up here. I suppose they turn off all the heat at 6 o'clock. Uh, cash receipts, that's more like it. Uh, here we are, 1938, 39, and 40. Who's that? It is me, Dolores. Oh. Uh, if you're looking for Judge Hooker's chambers, Miss Del Rey, they're on the next floor, down the hall. But I'm not looking for Judge Hooker. I'm looking for Water Commissioner Gildersleeve. That is you, no? Yeah, I'm the commissioner. What can I do for you? I wish to make a complaint, Senor Commissioner. A very serious complaint. Oh? What's the matter? No water? No. No, Commissioner. <laughs> Why have you not come to see me, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, I... Are you angry with me? No. Then what is it? Well... The party at my house the other night. Oh, the party was lovely. I enjoyed it. You walked out on it. Oh, the judge practically dragged me away. I suppose he dragged you to lunch at the downtown club today. Mm, he told me I would see you there, and I did see you. But you did not see me. Oh, yes, I did. If it's your idea of fun to have lunch with an old crumb like Hooker, well, go ahead. Have lunch with him every day. Oh, oh you funny man. Why do you think I came up here? I can't imagine. Oh, foolish. The judge is very sweet, but he's very old. Oh? He's like Santa Claus. Or, or my grandfather. I want to talk to someone with a little sparkle in his eye. Someone with youth and strength and zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Senor, Senor, what are you tearing up? The cash receipts for 1938, 39, and 40. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to announce that our program next week will originate at the Navy Pier in Chicago in connection with the Sixth War Loan Drive. I hope you'll all be listening. But you don't have to wait till end to buy a bond. Hi, Chief. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> program was directed by Claude Sweeten. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Until the war is won, you homemakers won't be able to buy all the delicious Pabstet cheese food you want because vast quantities of dairy foods are being sent to our fighting fronts. But remember, each package of golden, delicious Pabstet cheese food you do buy goes a long way by lending its mellow, appetizing cheese flavor to other nourishing foods. You see, Pabstet melts with luscious smoothness, so it's easy to whip up tempting Pabstet omelets, Welsh rabbits, souffles, and to prepare all kinds of grand macaroni and cheese dishes with Pabstet. You can get delicious sandwich variety with Pabstet, too, because it blends so smoothly with other ingredients. 
Pabstet is high in milk protein, helps provide food energy, milk minerals, important vitamin A and vitamin G, also known as riboflavin. So look for, ask for, and when you can, buy this delicious, nourishing cheese food, Pabstet. This is the National Broadcasting Company.